What is happening everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Crypto Catch Up. Tonight I wanted to do a video for you on another blockchain platform that's coming out. However, it's a little bit different to what I've done in the past. So a lot of the stuff I've been looking at is, is really racing towards that next gen tech level. This is something uh, you know a little less sinister in terms of it's, it's not as exciting, uh, but what it is doing is attacking an industry which certainly needs this kind of involvement and definitely has a place with blockchain technology. Now, the project that I'm going to be talking about is Open Source University. Now, they have had their pre-sale in 2017, but aren't due to have the actual ICO or their token sale until about halfway through 2018. Uh, so they have a lot of time to improve uh, and a lot of time to build out their platform, which they are planning to do. Uh, so let's crack on, get into it, and have a look at what it's all about. So Open Source University is trying to empower 7 billion students or learners to connect with the world's top academic education providers and different levels of professional development, all by utilizing the Ethereum blockchain. Now, what I first want to get into is the state of universities and higher education at the point in time, not only here in Australia, but across the world. Uh, it's a good place to start because not all of you as investors might have gone through university, you might be a tradie, but this does apply to you irrespective of the name university in the title. So, you know, if we look back in the origins of, of higher learning or, or that kind of education, it was once decentralized back in, you know, the 19th century or even thousands of years before that. You know, it, it was something where there wasn't diplomas, there wasn't, you know, fancy little certificates that would, you know, given to you at the end. It was something where the, the community as a whole had the power. They sat down in, you know, the universities and they said, you know, you come and lecture us you come and do this and if you are good enough we'll keep you on and we'll continue to learn but it was done in very much an ad hoc fashion the people of the time found what suited them to learn about not something that was prescribed to them in some form of curriculum that you look at and you go wow in four years time am i actually going to be a lawyer will i actually have you know skills and, and how will i prove that i have such skills um, whereas if you look at the current environment it's exclusive, especially if we talk about things like, you know, American universities or colleges. So Yale, Harvard, Stanford, all these big names are exclusive. They actually rank themselves on how many people they don't actually let in, you know, that prestigious kind of nature. They're also expensive. I recently looked at uh, starting, uh, you know, a different kind of tack in, in my MBA. And some of the places in Australia alone were charging sixty to eighty thousand dollars, and I kind of looked at it and I was like, "Listen, you know, as much as the MBA title sounds good, I am not going to get sixty to eighty thousand dollars worth out of that program. No, thank you." Uh, and a lot of it is research based. So these lecturers, they're not obviously silly people, but they come from a background which forces them to contribute back to the scientific community as doctors of their particular field. So they're not actually really that well equipped to teach others and they might not actually want to do that at all. And I think anyone that's been to university has lecturers that have been like that. They just don't give two hoots. Uh, and universities as a whole have become complacent. You know, they've got these monolithic institutions that, um, you know, are very much bricks and mortar. They've, some have tried to move online and open online courses, but it doesn't give you that ad hoc nature a lot of people need. For me, I've got my IT degree, but I want to supplement with, you know, something from finance here, something from a, you know, a business, an economics point of view, but I don't want to do an economics degree. I don't want to do a business degree. I just need those little supplementary elements to build up my repertoire to be able to handle, you know, a, an executive position or something. That is something that we're looking at with this project with Open Source University. So what's the learning landscape like right now? Well, it's a $4.6 trillion marketplace. Now, if you thought people weren't going to look into that and apply blockchain technology, you were wrong. Um, there's seven plus billion learners or, or students out there that are wanting to better themselves or learn something new. And like I said, these traditional organizations or institutions 
aren't always keeping up. And that's where something like this project will come into play. So you start having these massive open online courses such as what MIT did, um, which they actually released back, I think 2011, I could be wrong, but not a lot of people actually finished the course. Was it a good course? Yes. But it didn't come with this little pretty certificate at the end, so people didn't see the value of it because a lot of employers these days go, you know, I want so-and-so this many years, but I want you to have a degree. What for? I know some of the greatest wizards in development and they do not have degrees. They do not have certificates. But let me tell you, they spend the hours to learn what their craft is going to be. It's just like a tradie, you know. They go home and they do this and they, and they learn how to play with wood and, and do that sort of stuff. You don't need a certificate for that. Then you have these online study options which are now starting to take a, a foothold of that kind of traditional institution where the Coursera's, the edX, the Udemy's, uh, people are putting their own courses up and providing that content in short, sharp bursts, which is a lot more cost effective. So we're starting to see this changing, changing landscape, sorry, that traditional institutions are finding it hard to keep up with. Now, why blockchain in education? Well, like I said, there's, you know, there's very much a, a good use case for that. And we have the three pillars over here. So you have academia, you have businesses who are looking for those you know, students that are coming out of it, looking to employ them. The academics obviously looking to teach, but also to get those students in to, to run a profitable business and the students as a whole. So the authenticity of the blockchain, you know, it's immutable. So you can store people's education, certification and achievements in a profile, a portable profile, if you will, where I can walk anywhere in the world and say, hey, check out the open source universities platform you'll see me these are my skills irrespective of whether it be a short course a day course you know five years experience a recommendation on github you will see it there in all its entirety beautiful how good is that i can do that anywhere in the world decentralizing trust so businesses are driven by this third party trust so they don't have to cover everything themselves and a distributed ledger technology certainly enables that trustless environment to occur. It's less bureaucratic. Now, what I mean by that and the way I read this is that, you know, I work for a federal government department and when I work for them, there's a lot of information we require from citizens of the country to prove that they are doing a particular thing to meet legislative requirements. Now, if that means that a platform like this is going to provide us the data in an immutable way that's trustless so we can trust that information uh, without having to, to go to a third party. This not only benefits academia, businesses and learners, but it benefits government organizations too and takes that burden off social service payments uh, and, and that kind of industry. Uh, direct interaction, so it enables blockchain um, businesses, academia and learners to all work together via this ecosystem which we'll go into shortly uh, and obviously security, everyone knows about that. Now why open source university? Now there's a lot of these projects out there I am sure, I haven't researched a lot into what is currently available. Uh, this is just something that's come across in my readings over the weekend when I like to get in and find a project for the week to cover for you guys. So they're excluding third parties. It's going to be a low cost tokenized platform um, to not only pay uh, academic uh, institutions, but businesses uh, through this tokenized system, which is the EDU token. Uh, it's an independent marketplace. So like I said, it is an ecosystem. It is a platform whereby not only an individual will be able to store their record of their history, their experience, but they'll able be able to, to do these bespoke kind of courses by taking a course from you know Harvard, taking a course from Princeton, taking a course from Griffith University in Australia. It's something that enables this possibility, but it gives each party what they need along the way and stores the results of that on the blockchain. Uh, so it says it's got sophisticated matching algorithms and what that's referring to here guys is they actually have three smart contracts, which we'll, we'll go into shortly, but 
what it's saying is that if you have an immutable record of all of your learnings and all of your you know achievements as an individual why can't we use that to reduce the recruitment process take away some of this third-party overhead cost with recruiting and say well this is what you're looking for for a business this is what this person has this is where they live maybe this would be a good match here let's hook you up have an interview see what happens from there like it says global marketplace uh, and contribution so you can obviously get in early at this point in time um, but i'm not shilling anything here and as we jump out here i'm just going to add to that point I have nothing to do with open source university this is not financial advice i'm doing this because i'm passionate about one education which is why i provide this free content but two the fact that this certainly has a role utilizing blockchain technology which a lot of other projects simply do not have at this point in time and are looking for a bit of a money grab so this is certainly something that i can support purely based on the fundamental idea of what they're trying to achieve so let's have a look at the project. So OS Unius, it's kind of abbreviated. It's a platform, we've been through that. They're gonna use smart contracts. So down here, you've got your L to B smart contracts, so your learners to businesses, your L to A learners to academia, and your businesses to academia. So what you'll find is with your learners to business, so your, your left-hand side of, of that there, it's kind of like where we're, we're storing that, um, those certificates and everything like that. So it's showing the businesses, you know, what the learners have in this smart contract, utilizing the Ethereum network. Um, like I said, from a business's point of view, uh, it reduces recruitment costs. It reduces a, a, a range of overheads by putting them in contact, not only with learners, but academia to kind of define what would be a good pathway for you know, somebody to work at their company to take. It provides them the ability to kind of set an agenda and say, hey, listen, if you want to join our company, you know, whatever company that may be, maybe take these courses. We would like to see that in our students. It's a good way to leverage yourself into that position moving forward, whether it be as an intern or not. Great impact. Government, like I said, lower social impact. Um, certainly the use of these smart contracts will enable that you know trustless environment to occur matching of individuals matching of courses payment of particular tokens uh, to allow you know those academic institutions to be paid businesses to pay up if they need to for you know that learners data all within this ecosystem let's have a look at the team so the team here is very strong. They do have a well-established team, uh, not only people from blockchain to be able to lead this technically into the future, uh, but a lot of academic supporters. So you have the professor up the top there. Uh, these are just snapshots of their profiles, but please have a look at their website, uh, which we'll show you shortly after uh, to show where you can get that information relating to each one. Um, and then, like I said, a few more research advisors, corporate advisors, um, community advisors, etc., etc. So we won't go into the team. Like I said, uh, a raft of experience. This project uh, has, um, you know, majority of staff out of Bulgaria um, and, and that part of uh, Europe there. So let's have a look at this roadmap. So this is certainly not a new project. 2015, boom, right up there. Proof of concept, can this work? Yes, it bloody well can. Um, they've gone along, uh, like you see here in 2016, they actually uh, were announced as a top 10 social innovation idea globally as a part of a Hewlett Packard Enterprise uh, competition there. Uh, and we're coming through here and this is where we're kind of up to at the moment. So they've gone through uh, their, you know, kind of, token sale process or a pre-sale i should say they've achieved a certain level of investment funding and now they're starting to build out in the half of 2018 half of uh, the other half of 2018 to to release that kind of alpha beta version of their platform uh, and 2019 is going to be a big year where they start to try and integrate with obviously these academic institutions businesses learners alike it certainly won't be an easy task but you know something that that they're going to have to overcome in getting these organizations on board 
Um, just quickly, partnerships there. So, like I said, a lot of work with the ministry in um, Bulgaria. Uh, that's where a lot of this work has come from. But, you know, recognized by EY, Ernst & Young, if you're not a familiar of one of the top four uh, advisory consulting firms in the world, Hewlett Packard, etc. All right, let's have a look from the technology point of view here. That's what a lot of people are here for. Now, there's not much to it. Like I said, guys, ERC20, Ethereum token, uh, no plans in the white paper to move to EOS or anything like that. Uh, they are looking at you know how scalability will affect their proposition. However, it doesn't seem like something where it needs huge transactions a second. They can utilize the underlying blockchain technology. Uh, whether they utilize side chains or something in the future for each organization to independently maintain uh, their information or their students uh, to manage that main chain and keep the actual size of the chain down, possibly. Um, but it is very much just an Ethereum platform utilizing smart contracts. So nothing more to say there, guys. Uh, it will just come down to how well they implement partnerships, how well they build out their you know, web present and their platform, and then utilize those smart contracts, which I might add, they are actually going through a three-stage uh, security audit um, with Open Zephyr. That's probably wrong, but a few projects to, to look at, you know, the validity of their smart contracts and make sure they are safe and sound, because uh, obviously if a smart contract goes wrong, it is wrong, um, so you can't change it. So, the token sale for this project, guys, is ages away. 4th of June, 1st of July. Long, long, long time away. Pricing and everything like that don't have the information for you now. I just wanted to bring up this project because for me, uh, in terms of my final thoughts, is that this is something that enables students, irrespective of your background, whether you want to do university or not, because some people just simply aren't learners like that. They might have a short course that they want to do and then want to prove to their employer that they did it, but they did it from an overseas university, they did it from an overseas trade college, they, they did a course down the road. Obviously, this enables somebody to have that record of attainment throughout their life cycle and to prove to any employer that they don't have to have this university degree. They don't have to have this, that, or the other, or one specific curriculum for three years to be an absolutely stellar employee with a wide range of backgrounds. That is what I'm looking forward to see. I believe universities are heavily out of touch, and this is an opportunity for everybody to get involved, to have the ability to change the landscape of our learning um, you know opportunities that we have now to lower the cost to remove these third parties and to utilize blockchain for something that will certainly change the world in that space so let's just jump quickly over to their website so this is their base homepage here guys so it goes through those three smart contracts like I talked about um, and how they play a role in it uh, this was their initial token sale nothing major roadmap and a bit of other information. Um, up the top here, you have your tokens, your team. So if you click on that team, uh, like I said, do, 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 it will go through and show you these guys. If you click on them, it gives you a bit of a spiel. Have a look at their Wikipedia. Uh, I did have a look at their YouTube, their Medium, their GitHub. They've got all of that kind of information. Look at this down here, Medium, uh, Telegram, Instagram, Twitter, all of it, Reddit, you know, they've got all the platforms covered. Uh, they are, you know, like I said, a long-standing project, so that's good. Um, it goes through a bit more of the platform here if you are interested to have a look at what they're planning. Uh, and this is their white paper. So their white paper is not technical at all. You'll be able to read it with a breeze uh, and go through and have a look at what they're talking about. Like I said, long, long, long way away from a token sale, uh, but something nonetheless whether it makes you a lot of money or not it is something that is worthwhile supporting if you believe in that education space awesome all right guys well thank you once again for having a listen in to one of my reviews please like um, and subscribe if you can and i've got another interesting review coming up on a blockchain 3.0 platform that i've had a look at today coming out of korea and everyone knows something out of korea china 
Asia is always filled with hype and buzz, so let's deconstruct that and see how we go. See you later, guys.